All right, you beautiful embers. You know what time it is. Welcome to Back to Ashes. My name is Phoenix. Before we even get started with today's video, please take a look at your screen and wish everyone in October a very happy birthday. I decided to save it for about the middle because no matter if you were born on the 1st or the 31st, I wanted everyone to kind of feel that spooky vibe of Halloween birthday wish. So, for myself and Stormy, who turns 2 on October 31st, we wish you all a very spooky and haunted birthday. If you are new to the channel and you begin to love what you are hearing, please join the family by hitting that subscribe button. And also, don't forget to hit the notification bell because that one will remind you of every time I upload a video. Without further ado, it is time to go back to ashes. For once we arise from the ashes, we are bigger, brighter, stronger, and a happier person every day. Sit back, relax, kick back, grab a snack, or tuck in to get warm, and prepare for your dose of vocal melatonin entitled True Creepy Let's Not Encounters. Right after this intro, there will be an ad. I'll read the first story, there will be an ad. And after that, there will be no more ads within this video. Disclaimer, this video is for educational and entertainment purposes. I believe this was April of 2018. I had gone to Colorado for a concert and was just driving around checking everything out before and after. The day before the concert, I'm driving through the Rockies because I thought it'd be cool, I guess. It was already probably 9 p.m. at this point. I got to a gas station and there's an old lady with a giant suitcase. I went inside, bought a pack of Swishers, got gas, and I was leaving. She asked me for a ride. Being young and stupid, I said, sure, hop in, ma'am. Then she had me get her giant suitcase in my back seat, and we were off. The ride started off pretty normal at first, just talked about life. She did most of the talking, mostly about her kids and family. She claimed she was hitchhiking to Alaska for some insane reason I can't remember. Anyways, I had a joint that I decided to just give her and let her smoke while we were driving. Not sure why. Maybe to get her to shut up a little bit. Eventually, she asks if I want to try her weed, but keeps mentioning how it tastes funny, which was a red flag, so I politely said no. Then, she started getting weird talking about homeless camps where people smoke meth. Then, I actually got a good look at her and realized she was probably like a 40-year-old tweaker and not as old as I thought she was. Also, I think I saw an Adam's apple and thought it could have been a dude. Yeah. Anywho. She starts pointing out the rest stop signs or whatever which were like a hundred miles out, and was trying to convince me to go to one with her, and kept saying, I don't have any money, but some people will have you suck their dick if you give them a ride. And at this point, I'm already driving like a maniac in the middle of a pretty bad snowstorm at the time, in hopes that I'm more visible and noticeable to people if anything were to happen. I was terrified for my life, politely refusing all of her sexual and drug-related advances. Finally, we get to a town on the opposite side of the Rockies from Denver, and I pull up to a gas station and say, Okay, I gotta go back to Denver and get some sleep. I'm dropping you off here. All she said was, You're a lucky, smart young man. And I help her unload the suitcase and left, Thanking God I was still breathing. If any of my actions are questioned, this was at a time in my life when I was particularly lost and not in a good mental state at all. I definitely shouldn't have been roaming Colorado by myself. Smaller guy, no weapon, aside from a knife. I'm incredibly lucky. Oh, quick edit. I'm off a... 500 milligram edible fighting for my life in these comments. 
Love you. I matched with a man on Tinder one day. The conversation got spicy and I gave him my number so we can continue chatting. We texted that night. We never exchanged photos or nudes or anything like that. Never made plans to meet up. The conversation died and I forgot about them. Weeks go by and I deleted the conversation. Then, late one night, I get a lewd photo of a man I don't recognize. I think of insulting them but decide to just delete it and not respond. A few weeks later, I get another one. I have the idea to check my deleted messages to make sure I don't know them. Sure enough, I find out. It's the Tinder guy. It's really weird of them to text me a month later just lewd photos after no contact or anything for over a month. Ugh. So, I blocked him. A couple weeks later, I get a lewd video on my Apple Watch. It's the same guy. I'm not sure how I got the message on my watch if I already blocked this number. I block him again on my watch. What a weirdo, I think. A week later, I leave my apartment to go on a walk. And guess what? I see him. He is right there in front of my apartment, walking towards me. He has the same outfit on as in his profile photos, and the same tattoos and hat, so I am certain it is him. I never mentioned where I live, and I'm starting to freak out. But I'm dressed in baggy clothes and recently changed up my hair color, so I keep my head down in hopes he doesn't recognize me. I walk right past him. I was too scared to look at him to see his reaction if he recognized me. I was too scared to look back in his direction to see where he went, so I just kept walking forward. I was severely freaked out, but nothing else happened after that, and I never saw him again. I never mentioned where I live, so my only thought is he must have used my phone number to look me up. It was the least likely person I would have expected. Just some random person I message for only one day on Tinder. Even with the lewd content they sent, I still just thought they were a regular perv. I never expected them to somehow show up at my apartment. They didn't even text a word to me or attempt to meet up. They just send lewds over two months and then appeared. It's just so random and weird. I think their motive was definitely something sexually perverted. It gives me creeps to think about what they wanted, but I'm glad they left me alone. I never give out my real phone number to dates anymore. So, to the creepy guy who just randomly showed up to my apartment and me not knowing how, I hope we never, ever meet again. I was at the gas station and went up to the register to buy gas and some drinks as I was going on a small road trip. I got there, and there is a large, balding man with a ginger beard with the name tag Guy. I smiled at him and was polite, since I work customer service, and tried to be nice to everyone because you'll never know what kind of a day said person may be having. Guy smiled at me and asked if we've met before. I've never seen him in my life, and I made a joke saying, I just have one of those faces, and laughed it off. I had alarm bells ringing in my head because of his tone. I had a deep, sinking feeling in my gut as he took his time checking me out. Guy kept talking to me, saying I looked great today, and he guessed my dead name. My dead name, but I haven't told anyone my dead name in years, as I am non-binary and hate people knowing. I try my best and keep my dead name a secret, 
Plus, I was paying with cash, so I couldn't think of a way that he would know. I smiled more to brush it off, trying to imply that wasn't my actual name, saying, No, I go by Royal. He frowned and scratched his beard, and I could have swore I saw bloody dandruff or something like that come down on the gowner. I took my change and went out to my car, filling it up as quickly as I could. I pulled out my phone with the intent to let others know my location and just to tell my friends and my mom. Feeling hot breath on my dead and someone's body pressed up against my back, I spun around and there was Guy. The most ungodly smell hit my nose as he looked down at me. I am 5'6", and my best guess was that he was six foot tall. Guy smiled. Multiple of his teeth had been missing. He said I was rude for talking about him behind his back. I laughed it off and apologized. I went to quickly get the gas pump out of the car. Before I could even get my hand on it, Guy grabbed it from me and did it for me, smirking and saying that I shouldn't bother doing such manly things. He went on to explain that he finally knew where he knew me from. He explained I was a sex slave in a past life, that he was my master and he knew my frame anywhere. I'm 17 and I have never met this man in my life. I nodded and tried to laugh it off, saying, Oh, um, really? I didn't want to anger him. The man didn't seem to be happy with that, as I tried to go around and get into my car. He opened the passenger door to get it. I was in full panic mode and had started my car and put metal to the metal with both doors swinging open. As I drove away... Guy had fallen to the ground and started to scream and curse. I pulled over after a mile and shut both of my doors. So, Guy, at the gas station, I hope I never meet you ever again. I live in a small, seemingly safe, but not so aesthetically nice subdivision. My partner works in law enforcement, so I am home alone many nights throughout the week. A few weeks ago, we adopted a small dog, and since I work remotely, I frequently take our dog on walks throughout the neighborhood for exercise and to help him body train. We have lived in the neighborhood several years, but normally do not walk the neighborhood much, so we do not know many of our neighbors. Now that I go outside more, I am beginning to meet more of our neighbors. Usually, it is simply a hello in passing, but there are a few neighbors I now speak to frequently. Everyone seems harmless and friendly, except this one neighbor who I will refer to as Bob. One day I was out walking my dog, and as I passed Bob doing yard work, he stopped me and said what a cute dog I had. He went on to tell me about his time in the military, training bite dogs, how he was shot, and remnants behind his heart, etc. And, while odd, it seemed friendly enough. What I thought was going to be a five-minute conversation turned into 90 minutes of me smiling, politely nodding, and slowly backing away. I'm going to try my best to retell the conversation from memory, but it is hard because Bob was all over the place, and his stories were not cohesive at all. While specific, they were very over-the-top and embellished. Because of this, I won't give too many details for identity reasons. Essentially, he went on to talk about how rich and important he is, along with his family, yet he lives in a mobile home. He said he's so important that he's had every presidential cabinet on speed dial, that the government has flown him around the world on Apaches to do top-secret missions, that his family has gotten away with murder and it's been swept under the rug by the government, 
that even googling his name would have the authority sent to your door for questioning. He said he used to be in construction and did masonry work for a bunch of celebrities and still hangouts with a lot of them. He said he speaks seven languages, has a black belt in martial arts, and wrestles alligators. He asked me to fill his arm muscles and lifted up his shirt to show me his scars. I could literally go on and on about all the crazy and incoherent things he said. At this point, I chalked it up to the ramblings of someone not mentally okay. It took a turn when he asked, Your old man is the cop that lives down the street, right? I wished I wouldn't have made this mistake of saying yes. As a woman, it can be hard to set boundaries with people like this for fear of confrontation or things escalating. Bob proceeds to tell me his son who turns out went to high school with my partner and I, and my partner don't get along. He said he thinks it has something to do with my partner and his son's baby mama, as Bob put it. For context, my partner and I are high school sweethearts, and we never really spoke to Bob's son as he was in a different grade than us, and we certainly haven't spoken to him since graduating. Neither of us know the mother of a child. Bob also started making comments on my hair. It is red, which is often fetish-sized. And asked me to take my sunglasses off so he could see my eyes. He said I reminded him of an old neighbor he used to have. And he also said I reminded him of his daughter. He kept saying, you are a pretty girl, and remind me of my insert Bob's daughter's name here. He then proceeds to tell me all about the hot women he slept with and how he's been to court for over 50 paternity tests and wants to know if he might be my dad. I am not originally from this area and my parents have been together 33 years. No way Bob is my dad. I am sure I'm leaving a bunch of stuff out, but you get the gist. I finally was able to make a break for it, finished my walk, and headed home. This was about three weeks ago, and I no longer go for walks with my dog. I take him to a park or a friend's house. Since then, Bob has come to my house and knocked on my door three times, the last time being today. I obviously did not want to answer the door all three times. The past two times, my partner was not home, and today my partner was sleeping. Night shift worker. I am honestly a little freaked out and not sure what to do. My plan was to keep ignoring him, but I am afraid it will escalate or I will run into him outside, since I still have to take my dog out to go to the bathroom. My mom wants my partner to go talk to Bob to see what his problem is or what he wants. I think that's a very bad idea. Please, let me know what you guys think. Do you think he's harmless and a bit mentally unstable? Or do I have something to worry about here? Quick update. I looked him up on our county clerk's of court's website, and wow. He has a very long rap sheet, dating all the way back to the 80s to present day. It started off with traffic infractions, careless driving, running stop signs, etc., but quickly escalated to possession and dealing of meth and cocaine, several charges, charges of soliciting prostitution, two charges of kidnapping, and tons of battery charges. Aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, grand theft of firearms, burglary, burglary with the firearm, domestic violence, violation of a protection order, and that is all I saw before I had to stop. I even thought maybe I was looking at the wrong person, but I confirmed the full name and date of birth. I'm going to go do some more digging.
Back in 2023, me and my partner were both living at his mom's house. Most days, we'd get home from work at about 5 p.m., get dressed, and then we'd go to these woods in the hills just outside the town we lived in. For context, these woods as a whole are 12 miles long and 4 miles wide. There's breaks in the woods of farmland and fields creating separate woods over these hills with different names. You can walk through these woods if you want. There's paths winding through most of the woods and trails, and if you want to walk over the span of hills from one side to the other, you can if you really want to. Just most of it's through the woods and uphill if you're coming from the south. The one we always went to is called Wind Down Woods. So me and my partner would go to these woods nearly every day after we finished work just to go for a walk or a smoke or both. We went about doing our usual routine, walking around and talking about our days, following the trail in these woods that loops around a large set of trees with more around you on the outside. Would look like kind of a mess donut from a bird's eye point of view, I guess. We were walking on the path that takes you back towards the top of the woods. The path also takes you down towards the car park once you get to the meeting point of all the paths. When we see the man in the distance walking down the path at point B. Point B are one of the trails that goes up into the woods beyond wind down. We've still got to get to the meeting point of all the paths to get back to the car. At this point, he's pretty far away from us, still. But I had a bad feeling because the first thing I noticed about the man when we got closer was that he was wearing office shoes and carrying a pair of hiking boots whilst seemingly on a walk in the woods. We were talking about this as we were walking up and laughing about how strange it was. The guy was walking faster than us as we were going downhill and reaching the meeting point of the paths a few minutes before we did, but we could see him the entire time. When he got to the meeting point of the paths, all he did was stand there. He didn't do anything. He just stood and was looking around. I had a really bad feeling at this point, as he didn't even look like he was lost. He just looked like he was waiting for something. Me and my partner were pretty weirded out at this point and were thinking about turning around and heading back down into the woods and go back around the long way just to get away from this guy and his weird-ass vibes. In the end, we decided the walking back down into the woods would ultimately look way too suspicious as the man had definitely seen us walking up the path towards him the same time we'd seen him walking down. So, we just kept walking up the whole time this guy still just standing there looking around with these shoes in his hands. Having no other choice than to walk past this guy to get to the path down to the car park, we went up and passed him, getting close to him. I saw something that worried me more than it weirded me out. The guy had a backpack on, and there was a handle coming out of it. 100% the handle of a hammer or an axe. I knew it couldn't have been anything else. He hadn't been on a phone at all the entire time. We'd seen him, not even when he was just loitering around. Just more and more stuff adding up and freaking a man out. As we walked past him and started down the path towards the car park, the guy decides he now knows where he needs to go without getting a phone out or compass. Nothing. And starts walking down behind us. At this point, I was freaking out, and so was my partner, who doesn't usually get paranoid about stuff like this because I do it all the time for no reason, but this guy was not right. There were no other cars in the car park except mine, so he had no reason to be walking there. We were walking as fast as we could without running away from this guy. After what felt like a lifetime, we got to the car, locked the doors, and drove off. I didn't even look back. 
To this day, I think about that guy and how strange he was acting. But then again, I think about how strange we were probably acting. And maybe the poor guy was simply on a walk. Cut to just the other week, and me and my partner are at our friend's house for their birthday, just hanging out, meeting their other friends we hadn't met before, and having a blast. But as usual with every small group hangout, it got late and we started talking about weird experiences we had had and spooky encounters. Obviously, we told everyone about our encounter with this really strange man in the woods. A couple of the girls at this hangout work at a reserve called Fine Court. It's one of the woods in the hills I've been talking about. They seemed pretty rattled by the story we had told and said that they had one that would make it worse, but they had to tell the group now. Plus, we needed to hear it. One evening at work, E was on a closing shift with her manager, and they'd been cleaning up the cafe and doing final checks when E's manager tells her that he's good doing the rest by himself and that she can just go home. Who doesn't want to hear that? So off she goes to her car, sits there for a bit to chill and roll a cigarette before the drive home. Later that night, she gets a text saying, Don't ask, just don't come in to work tomorrow. After talking to police, they connected some dots of a call they had earlier that evening from a concerned neighbor living in a village a couple miles from Fine Court reported seeing a suspect burglary of one of her neighbors. Another call from a mental health institute in a town about as far away as hours from these woods from the opposite direction, saying one of their patients had escaped. Turns out, after the police put the whole story together, this man escaped, got a haircut, and then walked miles to his village in the middle of nowhere, broke into this house he thought was abandoned. It was actually the home of an elderly couple. The man was completely disabled and wheelchair-bound, and his carer was his wife. The man actually murdered the elderly lady and just left the man in the house before leaving and walking into the woods, wandering around them and looking for someone with a car he could steal. That's when he ended up at Fine Court, and tried to take E's manager's car, running off into the woods again to find someone else. Me and my partner are so sure this is the exact same man we saw acting suspicious had wind down all that time ago as their story was from the same month as ours and the time frames matched up perfectly to when we would have seen him after he had tried to steal the manager's car and ran back off into the woods again. The police caught him the next day just wandering around in the woods up there. He was following us back down to the car, but who's gonna jump two guys in an open space where one of us could have easily made it to the road? I think he was trying to freak us out and got us to go back into the woods when he stopped at that meeting point and was loitering around. I don't know. This still horrifies me to this day, and I just needed to get it off my chest and share this with someone. I'm sorry if this is extremely long-winded and badly written. I promise I was doing my best to explain the story well and try to explain the layout of the woods as best that I could. And now, I'm also hoping that that man doesn't escape custody and I happen to run into him ever again. Meet Jane. I don't know much about Jane except that she's from a small town and she moved here with her friends and boyfriend for university. When I first met Jane at the pub, I thought she hated my gut. She always gave me nasty looks, and when my friends tried to approach her, friends, she'd be rude to me. Jane is pretty, like very, very pretty. Like every guy in town has a thing for her. But 
Jane's boyfriend is insane, to say the least. They are regulars at the pub, and I've seen them break up at around three to four times, and the waiter working at the pub, guy in my friend group, says he's noticed them break up a dozen more, but they always come back together. A couple of months back, I had just finished with the gym, and I had just showered when my mom called and asked about this pub, and how's the food there. I told her the food's to die for, and she said she and my stepdad were on the way there. I told them I would meet them, too, because I was dying for some hot wings and a burger. We sit down, and me and my dad just start drinking beer after beer. And in no time, I had down like five pints of beer. I was getting a little bit tipsy, but I kept pushing through. My dear friend, let's call her Tina, called and asked if I was down for a drink. I told her to come to the pub as I was already there. She's going to meet my folks and that they plan on leaving soon, so she and I could continue. That's how it happened. My parents left, and Tina and I continued drinking on our own. The pub was closing, so Tina decided to go to the bathroom, and I walked with her inside to see if I could get another pint. We stumble upon Jane. Jane starts talking to Tina, and I realize they know each other. We all sit down to comfort her as she was a crying mess. Her boyfriend and she were done for good, and she revealed that he used to really abuse her, mentally and physically. I felt bad for her, so when she rested on my shoulder, I just let her. Tomorrow night, I get a DM from her, and she's apologizing about the trauma dumping. I tell her it's no biggie, as we all need to vent sometimes. Albeit, I do that to my therapist, not strangers, but whatever. The therapist is a stranger I pay. We continue chatting, and she constantly goes between I can't text you and then texting me again. Don't text me, and text me first when I didn't. Keep in mind, this is like two days since that interaction. One drunken night, she texted me to meet her. It was around 2 a.m., and I had my little cousin over. That whole night, we watched movies, and he had just fallen asleep. So, I declined her offer. Also, I feel it be a bit weird for me to hang out with her completely sober while she can barely see. I don't know. It's just weird to me. The next day, she's sobered up, and I agree to meet her for a hangout. We hung out for a while, and she was fun to hang out with. I did like her, and worry about her and her ex. Soon enough... Her leech of an ex left town, as he was never really interested in uni, just being close to her. On one of our dates, she revealed to me that she realized she had feelings for me, and that's when she broke up with her ex, resulting to him physically attacking her. One day, we had a date at her place, a little study date. After we finished studying, we relaxed on the couch and ended up making out. We didn't have sex that night, but I did finger her. I went home, and we continued talking about it, even exchanging photos. My first and only time sending a nude. And then we hooked up. Now, I'm a person who likes alone time, so sometimes I just want to chill at my house and not really be with anyone and she did not like this idea. She started spamming me with calls, saying how she could come over and we will chill. She will be silent and I'd still be alone. In my opinion, that's kind of defeating the idea of being alone, as I'm not fucking alone. Hello? Whatever. She threatened me that if I didn't pick up the phone, she would never talk to me again. This is where I snapped and told her that her lukewarm at best manipulation tactics would not work on me and to not contact me again. She flipped out and came to my part of town, hanging out and wanting for me to come out. I told her, 
I begged her millions of times not to come to my house, but she simply said, no, nah, I'll pass, and came anyway. I literally felt so disrespected because all of a sudden I hold no value in life when she texted me, come out, I'm here. I texted her, nah, I'll pass, and stayed home. Now, she's following me everywhere I go. It's been months and I'm dating the girl of my dreams. But that has not stopped her from being in my shadow. She's learned my routine. When do I go to the gym? When I'm at practice, etc. And she never fails to show up or drive past where I'm at. My stepbrother reviewed the security footage from our house, and we counted her car driving past the house at least 14 times, and that's all in one day. I still get texts from her on the daily, even though she's blocked. She gets wasted and spams me with messages on WhatsApp that she then deletes. My girlfriend is absolutely livid with this chick, as she would not leave me the fuck alone. I do not fear for my life, but I have warned my friends that if I die, it would not be an accident or a suicide. She's in my shadow. I constantly have to check my six to see if she is behind me. Part 2 to this chaos as much as I hoped I wouldn't have to update ever again, deep down I knew that it wasn't the truth. For the past three months, until the 25th of September, my girlfriend and I, together with my younger brother, went to Germany for one of our relatives' weddings. Here, my girlfriend met my dad and my older brother, who live in the States, and overall, in these three months, I had no worries about Jane, as well as no contact with her. Well, the 25th rolls around, and the three of us land back in South Africa. My stepdad picked us up, and we went back to my house for lunch, and then I drove my girlfriend back to her house. I was rather exhausted from the flight, so her and I took a nap at her place, got up at around 7, and started getting ready for the night out. At 9, we sat in this one pub with three of my friends, and my best friend stopped a picture of me, posting it on a story with the caption, The boys back in town, together with the bald eagle and burger emojis. I hate him so much for that. Well, not even two minutes later, Jane walks in to the pub. We brushed it off as a coincidence as she does not follow him on Instagram. But we later realized that one of her friends does. We ignored her as we continued drinking. I don't know if she was staring towards us or not as I specifically instructed everyone not to look at her direction. Overall, a nice fun night out. Fast forward to the 27th. My friends and I packed my truck as we planned to spend two days at Dragon Peaks, a mountain roughly two hours from town. I asked my girlfriend if she was willing to come, but she said she had plans with her girls, so she stayed in town. Well, my girlfriend went into town and into the pub we usually chill at, and she sat behind the bar, as one of her girls works there, and they wanted to include everyone in the hangout. The girl working behind the bar jokingly asked her, You finally left your man and came crawling back to us? To which my girlfriend replied with, I hated him so much anyway, girl, fuck him. This is a paraphrasing of their conversation as they were joking and drinking. They kept joking about us breaking up and my girlfriend needing her friends again, but they didn't realize that Sam, one of Jane's friends, was there listening to them. At around the same time, Jane texts me from her burners. And I know at around the same time as I text my girlfriend right away, and that's when she spotted Sam connecting the dots. Jane asked me to meet up, 
at least for 15 minutes, now that I don't got a girlfriend no more. I asked her what she was talking about, and Jane sent me a text saying, Aubrey is embarrassing you at the pub right now, telling everyone how much she hates you, how you are the worst person to have ever been born, how much you should go to hell. I thanked Jane for the heads up and told her that I will no longer be replying to her texts. She starts maniacally texting me even more, begging to meet me for at least 15 minutes, and she will get over me. She will stop thinking about me. But how she needs to see me in person in order for her to fully move on. I told her I wasn't in town, and she texted me something that fully made me want to get on a plane and move back to the States. She texted, Where the fuck are you? I watched you having rugby practice this morning. This is where I just put my phone down and didn't respond. She went back to her usual texting me a ton of messages and deleting them before I could see them. She even started calling me. I blocked her, and to no one's shock, an unknown number starts calling me. I block her again, and I started getting phone calls from no caller ID. I knew it was her, as that's a way to bypass being blocked. I turned off my phone and texted Aubrey what happened from my friend's phone, telling her to contact me there if something happened. On the 29th, I went back in town and I changed my phone number. Now on October 1st, 2024, I still haven't had any contact with Jane. My phone has been quiet, but I did see her car parked at the gym parking lot so I didn't go to my usual gym today. Instead, I paid for one day of working out at another gym. My plan is to fully change my gym and to start avoiding the pub, just so she can move on. My family and friends say it's not fair for me to miss out on hanging out with my friends at a place where we've been hanging out for three years now. But I really see no other way out. I'll keep you guys updated if there's more to come. Well, God damn me if I thought I'd be updating you all so soon. Oh boy, where do I even start with this one? I guess the best thing I should start with is that I brought this whole situation up with my therapist. I ended up with a psychiatrist and later a therapist in August of 2022 and February 2023 for completely unrelated issues. The first thing he asked me was, how does all of this make me feel? I told him that the whole situation made me extremely uncomfortable and brought back memories from when I was acting all crazy about someone, albeit I never went as far as Jane did. We talked about a lot of parallels between what I've done in the past and what she's doing to me now, and we realized that Jane and I might be similar, of course. My therapist didn't try to diagnose her or anything, but it's worth mentioning I'm diagnosed with borderline personality disorder after my parents' sudden divorce when I was 12 and very messed up relationship. I was dragged and forced into with my teacher when I was 13. It has been sorted out, and I'm trying to bore you with backstory stuff, but I thought it worth mentioning. And plus, I was told journaling is good, so I guess this is my version of it. For starters, and this isn't even the juicy part of the story, two days ago, after my younger brother, who was 17, and I finished our gym session, we went to the pub, as it was still in the middle of the day, and we didn't think anything of it. We ordered our drinks and food, and we started talking. At first, it was the basic older younger brother banter. Then we started gossiping about half our families, and finally, our talk went to Jane. 
My brother revealed to me that she had been sending him follow requests on Instagram for the past week or so, but he had been ignoring her altogether. We continued talking about her, until you guessed it, she just appeared at the pub with one of her friends. She sat on a table rather close to ours, so my brother and I decided to switch to our mom's native language, the beautiful and poetic Spanish. He and I continued rambling about her. I didn't even bat an eye on her. But every time I looked to my right, I could see her staring at us through the reflection of the nearby window. At one point, a guy from my class approached me and we started talking, and my brother excused himself to the bathroom. The bathroom at this pub is one main area with the sinks, and two separate places for men and women to do their business. I didn't notice her, but she followed my brother into the bathroom. He went into the men's washroom, and when he came back, she was just standing near the sink, staring at him with her crazy eyes, as he said. He washed his hands as she tried to make small talk with him. My brother, Lord bless his heart, being the literal copy of our mom, a sassy Cuban woman, just eyed Jane head to toe and said to her, you're not getting that American passport through me, darling, and left her standing there. Although this might be funny, I did scold him not to do that again, but he said he's not listening to me, so there's that. Now the juicy part. This noon, I got a DM from a girl that I know from the pub. I opened her message, and it was her asking me if I'd seen Jane's IG story. I told her that I had no way of doing that as she was blocked everywhere, to which the girl apologized for being the one to show me this, and she sent me a screenshot of Jane's story. At first, I didn't see anything weird in it. It was just a mirror pic of her in her bedroom. So I asked the girl to explain to me what it was I was looking at. And she just said to me, and I quote verbatim, Look above her bed. That's when I had a panic attack. I began to shake and hyperventilate, and my stepdad noticed, and he helped to calm me down with my stepbrother. They kept asking me what was wrong, and I kept repeating, She's fucking crazy. Over and over and over and over again. I remember, through my tunnel vision, my stepbrother picking up my phone and just saying, What in the actual fuck? Then my dad looked at it. She had painted a huge canvas portrait of me. And some of you might say that I'm overreacting. That may be I'm in the wrong, or maybe I'm the crazy one, but I know what I look like. And the guy in the portrait looks just like me. Black curly hair, high cheekbones, sharp jawline, same mustache and goatee combo. And the part that everyone convinced it's me, as if I didn't look like a literal picture of me. The eyes. See, guys... I have heterochromia. My grandpa had it, and his grandpa had it, and for some reason, every two generations in my mom's side of the family, the second born always has heterochromatic eyes. My right eye is blue and my left eye is green. And as you can make it up for yourself, that's exactly the eye color combo that the guy in the portrait had. This is where I feel the most conflicted. What now? What do I do now? My doubts about her initial story, about her abusive ex, are very, very high. I'm thinking about contacting him, getting his side of the story. I need to know what's going on because, as clear as it seems... This is still so confusing to me, and it still makes me panic every time I think about it. But in the meantime, Jane, if you're reading this, 
Please stay out of my fucking life. I live in a very small town where everyone knows everyone else. Last weekend, a girl walked up to my porch and said she had a friend who wanted to get to know me and ask if I was single. I told her I was, and she asked me for my number. I didn't see the harm in that, as I'm open to meeting new people. Big dumb mistake on my part. I'll never do that again. She left, and about five minutes later, I received a text from the guy. And it turns out I have known this person for almost 30 years, and we've never met or spoken to each other. He told me he thought I was pretty, and he'd like to get to know me better, and ask if he could stop by to talk in person. I said that was fine. This guy shows up with four other people, and it was immediately clear to me that they were all on drugs of some sort. I hadn't seen him for a very long time, so I was not expecting how he looked, especially with all these people. His name is Kerry, and he didn't have a single tooth left in his mouth, and he might have weighed 110 pounds, 5'7 at most. I was immediately regretful. Not only were all of his teeth missing, he had no job, no car, no money, and is currently homeless. I recognized immediately that this guy is trying to find a home for the winner, and he thinks he's going to date me. It's obvious he thinks very highly of his looks and his charming ways. <laughs> Honestly, his flirting was extremely repulsive. I got rid of him and the others by making up an excuse that I had somewhere to be. Four days later, my doorbell cam captured a video of Carrie walking up to my porch steps, where he decided to sit with his back to the camera. He turned and looked directly at the camera twice. It gets creepier a few days later. I woke up Friday morning at about 5.30 a.m. and decided to smoke a cigarette. I don't smoke inside, and since I caught him sitting on my porch, I would check my camera for any sight of him, and I did not see anyone, so I stepped out and I smoked. I was half asleep and staring down at the ground when I heard a voice. My head snapped up, and I'll be damned. He was standing less than three feet away from me. I nearly jumped out of my skin, and I screamed at him and said, you just scared the fucking shit out of me. What the actual fuck is wrong with you? I truly have no idea what direction he came from and how he was able to walk up on my porch without making a single sound. He laughed until he saw I was furious. Then he started explaining that he was here to tell me his phone had died and wanted to know if I had tried calling or texting him. The only text I sent him was asking him why the fuck he was sitting on my porch at 3.47 a.m. and he never answered. Leaning in towards me, trying to flirt with me after creeping the living hell out of me, he says, Good morning, sunshine. Oh, I wanted to slap the hell out of his ugly face. I told him, I am not a morning person at all. So, you need to go. He started explaining again why he was there, and then he started pouting and walked away very slowly and kept turning back to look at me like I was going to change my mind and invite him in or something. It was unbelievable. My doorbell cam actually recorded part of this interaction. After that, he started watching me from half a block away in front of a bowling alley that has a bench that directly lines up with my front door. For two days, he watched my every move. 
It even started pouring rain, and he just sat there watching me. I haven't seen him around in a couple of days, but I'm hoping he moved on to someone else. But my intuition is saying that he isn't done just yet. Cops know all about it. My son works for our sheriff's department and filled them in. This is one of the creepiest encounters I have ever had, and I'm a paranormal investigator. I've always said that it's the living you gotta worry about, and this proves it all. And this, dear listeners, brings a close to these true, creepy, let's not encounters. Before I go any further, I would like to recognize our elite members of Back to Ashes. Chrissy Elias, Anita V, Donna, Les Crispin, Samantha Blaze, Call Me Carter, Corpse Lover, Stephanie McLaren, Denise S, Tina Mee, Tammy Slayton, Dova Khaleesi, Edith Smith, Amy Klimko, and Haunted. Again, thank you all so much for being the pillars on which BTA rests. I can't thank you enough. To the other subscribers or first-time listeners or anyone else that popped in just to hear what the channel is about, thank you for your support. For without you, I wouldn't have a voice and there would be no back to ashes. If you are sleeping, I hope Slumberland is treating you comfortably. If you are awake, I hope you've enjoyed this collection. Until next time, please take care of yourselves. I'll be reading to you soon. Have yourself a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening. Peace, love, and light to you all.